Okay, now we're going to talk about initiation, th initiation of Heliox therapy. Uh, the most common way of doing Heliox therapy is via a high flow system, so to meet the patient's inspiratory demand of some reason. So in this example, we have a non-rebreather, although there's evidence out there for other devices to be used. Uh, we do caution people and we do uh, advocate that you use Heliox on label so uh, that you whatever you hook up to the Heliox blender is a device that is approved for Heliox use or has been tested with Heliox um, through it. So um, in this case we have a non-rebreather so we have our, uh, our friend here who is in a little bit of distress. Um, we connect our non-rebreather up to either of the flow meters but we'll use this flow meter in this example. Um, and where to start therapy at? What FiO2? Well, what FiO2 does a, is the patient requiring? So presumably maybe we're in the ER and you already have a baseline knowledge of what this patient requires. So we'll say that the patient's requiring 40% oxygen. So we'll dial up the dial to 40% and this is the actual oxygen percentage, not the heliox percentage. Um, and it is due to note that if this is 40% oxygen, the remaining balance is 60% helium. So um, this blender does, since this is an 80-20 blender, this blender goes from 20% oxygen all the way up to 100% oxygen. And we do 100% oxygen just in case that during therapy, if there's an emergency, the blender can be increased to 100% oxygen. And if resuscitation is necessary, you don't have to undo everything and try to go back to the wall outlet. You can just hook up your resuscitation bag to the blender, dial it up to 100% and go from there. So we have this patient that's requiring 40% oxygen and we'll turn on our flow meter and start flow. Um, one question is where do we start flow and what, what's the correct flow for Heliox? So typically a non-rebreather will be run at about 15 liters per minute. So if we look on our chart right here, we have 15 liters a minute of oxygen is what we're requiring. Um, so we're on 40% and that requires about 10 liters dialed in on an oxygen on this flow meter. So at 40% to get a total, we'll have a total flow of 15 liters per minute. We look over here and that says an oxygen flow meter setting of 10 liters per minute. So we fill up the non-rebreather, uh, place the non-rebreather on the patient. And from there we can start monitoring the patient's breathing. Heliox has a relatively short duration of onset to be action. Um, and its therapeutic range is a little bit distrib uh, discussed out there. Um, there's the feeling that uh, once you get above 40% oxygen or have less than 60% uh, helium, that Heliox therapy is really not effective. Although there's some recent journals out there that says that maybe that uh, a little bit of Heliox will potentiate an effect which will then in turn allow the patient to be uh, weaned in oxygen. So well, while we're using Heliox therapy, we're taking use of the density of Heliox to get past obstructions. And when we're using Heliox, we're really using Heliox to get around airway obstructions. The other thing about Heliox, the other action of Heliox, is that helium carbon dioxide will diffuse a lot more readily into helium than it does oxygen or nitrogen. So we get some CO2 removal effect as well besides being able to exhale around the obstruction. Helium is an inert gas. It's colorless, odorless, it's tasteless. It really doesn't cross the uh, alveolar capillary membrane. So it is, is it, it is inert, it stays in the lungs. So um, there are some really very few side effects to using Heliox. The one side effect that people talk about is a high pitched voice and that's due to the density as the, the gas is flowing through the vocal cords it makes your voice a different pitch. Um, but the one thing to, to note is that the thermal, the thermal conductivity of helium is a little bit different. So if in doubt it's always better to warm the gas prior to giving it to the patient because helium um, can induce hypothermia because of its different thermal co conductivity properties different from um, oxygen, nitrogen, or the other respirable, respirable gases. So in this case we're using 40 percent, we're going to use 40 percent oxygen. And maybe you can hear that, but as I turn the FiO2 down to 40 percent, um, you can hear the flow change. So we have our flow set at 10 liters per minute on the flow meter, which is a total flow of 15 liters per minute uh, to this non-rebreather. Of course, if the patient's minute volume or inspiratory demand is high enough, we want to use enough flow to keep this bag inflated. So if we need to increase flow, we can always turn up our flow meter 
um, say maybe to 14 liters per minute. And when we do that, a flow meter setting of 14 liters per minute at 40% yields a total flow of about 20 liters per minute to the patient. So this uh, little chart that, that comes with the Heliox blender is important for a couple reasons. It prevents giving just too much flow to the patient, which then depletes your tank much quicker. So if you know the actual total flow of the patient, you can take your Heliox cylinder duration factors and calculate whether you're using an 80-20 or 70-30 uh, cylinders, you can calculate how long they'll, what their duration will be at its total flow. So you do two things when you use the blender. You're able to give the correct FiO2, the blender is accurate to plus or minus 3% oxygen, um, and you're also able to figure out this flow. We use oxygen flow meters. Um, we don't have specific Heliox flow meters with this uh, because at every different uh, level of Heliox you would come up with a different calculation of what the flow is, so it's a little bit hard to come up with a, a Thorpe tube style flow meter to cover all the concentrations of Heliox. That would really require some kind of electronic flow meter with feedback into the blender, um, but with this what we have done is we've given you well-published um, conversion factors for helium and using oxygen flow meters, and basically you kind of reference what FiO2 you're at, reference the card, you can either set your flow meter, see what your total flow at, or if you're trying to do something, a uh, form of therapy that requires you deliver a total flow to the patient, what you can do is find that total flow in the chart and then find the corresponding liter flow on the Thorpe tube flow meter. So in this case, we're at about 20 liters per minute at 40% oxygen. Of course, we're going to monitor our patient, check their pulse oximetry, um, and then look and see if there's signs and symptoms of respiratory distresses go away. Again, its primary indication is to overcome airway obstruction. So there's evidence out there for COPD, for asthma, for bronchiolitis in children, maybe RSV, those type of disease processes, croup, um, uh, upper airway strider, uh, aspiration of foreign body. Those are the type of things that cause an obstruction in the airway, that cause a narrowing, and it causes difficulty of gas passing through um, the respiratory system. So those are the type of cases where you'd want to consider heliox therapy. Again, if you're doing heliox therapy and the patient is just not responding, uh, do not let just the fact that heliox therapy may or may not be ineffective, do not let it uh, uh, stop you from progressing into what the patient truly needs. If the patient needs to be intubated or support it non-invasively, um, please move to that um, quickly and, and support the patient as necessary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. This is our Heliox Blender. Again, my name is Andy Brown from Precision Medical. I am the Clinical Products Manager. Should you have any questions, feel free to contact me or contact us at Precision Medical or your local distributor.